Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner and I'm privileged on this episode to be joined by my old friend, my former housemate, Mr. Ryan Hughes. Mate, I would say, how are you and how have you been? But I saw you very recently. So I will just say, how are you today? I'm good, Andrew. It's nice to see you. It's very nice to see you, as yeah, ever, it's, mate. It's, it's, like having nice a future, it's like having a virtual house reunion. It is. It is <laughs> absolutely like that. Absolutely like that. <laughs> have you done the washing up? Have you left your laundry I have indeed. Out? And, okay. and I, I've done the washing up and I've done the hoovering as usual. Fully okay. vacuumed. All you've got to do is the dishes, mate. That's it. Okay. You know, that's it. Deal. Deal. So, um, so uh, and we're here, of course, to talk about... Uh, to talk about the next brilliant step in your in your novel writing career. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ryan Hughes is a multi award winning uh, graphic designer. He's been heavily involved in the comics business. He's been heavily involved in typography. Uh, one of the leading people in his field. But recently, within the last eighteen months, has published the critically acclaimed. Uh, novel XX, the novel graphic XX, which has been a tremendous success. But we're not here to talk about that at Forbidden Planet TV. We're here to talk about Ryan's second novel, The Black Locomotive, which publishes on August the 5th and can be ordered from the links attached to our conversation. So, mate, what can you tell me about The Black Locomotive? It has trains in. Excellent. Um, Yes, uh, it's kind of like it, it, the shortest description I can give is as if J.G. Ballard wrote Thomas the Tank Engine. That is not only a short description, it is also a brilliant and supremely <laughs> evocative one. <laughs> so what, can you give me a flavour of the narrative? Um, it's a very, it's very much simpler um, sort of structure than XX, uh, much more linear narrative, much shorter book. In some ways, it's a more um, mainstream book. Um, I thought after the philosophical digressions of XX, maybe I should try something more straightforwardly commercial. Um, although it does have uh, digressions into the nature of London, the creative hub that is London, why that might be into sort of history of the tunnels under London, into Crossrail, into uh, the history of transport and technology. Um, one of its main themes is um, the rescuing of old technologies in the service of the new and how they might still have one last day in the sun and save the day. Yeah, now, now that, that, knowing you as I do, that sounds to me like the ideal construct, the, the perfect construct from the brain of, of Ryan Hughes. And I can see a number of your influences uh, it, it being mixed, remixed in a freewheeling manner to, to, to come up with that content. Um, I, I, I take it that as with XX, uh, it, the novel also has a tremendous amount of uh, design input from yourself. You no, know, it does. I designed, uh, as with XX, I wrote it as I designed it in InDesign. So I was typing away in the font in which it finally appears uh, in the published version. So the look of it very much um, was to the forefront. It wasn't written in double spaced courier in Word and then as a completely second um, process imported into a design program and laid out. It was designed and written in tandem. Uh, this is, um, as I say, it is slightly more straightforward. So there's a bit less of the typographic shenanigans than in XX, but it is there. And there is diagrams, a uh, bit of photography, uh, photographs that I took, um, various experiments with different fonts for different POVs um, and so on and so forth. So it, it does have a lot of those sort of graphic elements that, that XX um, had um, probably just not so much to the fore, and and that you are very well known for, of course, because you, you you've you've built your career around. Um, you've had quite an unusual influence over a wide variety of classic American comic books, and what I mean by that is there is there is a ton of comic books that you have created the logo for. In fact, there's a, you've published an entire book that covers that aspect of your work logo go go which you yeah. can also order from the links attached to this conversation 
Yeah, and, indeed. Uh, in, fact, in, fact, in fact, the background that's behind you is the Forbidden Planet logo, which was one of my early uh, logo designs, which I'm very pleased to see Forbidden Planet still use. And um, one thing... Right, it's right here, mate. It's right absolutely, here. Absolutely. And um, one of the things you hope to do when you design a logo is design something that has some kind of longevity so it doesn't date quickly. So you don't want to jump on a trend. You want to somehow come up with something more sort of universal and and long lasting so it's nice to see that Finn planet do indeed still use that logo but yes well, check out check out logo go go because um as uh as you say um a, a large portion of my work is graphic design work for the comic book industry so anything from batman and superman logos for DC Comics through to designing the multiverse with Grant Morrison and to, Mar to logos for Marvel and image books, Valiant. I designed many, many Valiant logos in their more recent iteration. So um, coming from originally drawing comics from 2000 AD um, back in the day, I mean, we're talking probably 25 years ago now when I was doing that. Um, that's, I, I, when, that's when you were working on Robo Hunter, right? And, and, uh, and yes, and Dare and um, Really and Truly and these other... Really and Truly and Dare, uh, yeah, which were, both of which you did with Grant Morrison. Yes, yes. And in fact, when Grant was editor of, um, uh, I was going to say Metal Halon, I mean Heavy Metal, a yeah. few years ago, we did actually collaborate again on some one or two short stories. So it was nice to sort of again do a bit of comics and keep my hand in at that although I so rarely get the time to do that nowadays and I'm going to try and make more time for that in fact novel number three might actually be a hybrid text stroke comic novel although I haven't really figured out how this will work but I'm going to try and work in um, sections that are done in the comic strip style within a more standardly laid out text novel and see how that works Mate, you are expertly anticipating my questions, and I can't wait to see that. That's phenomenal. Um, I, I mean, because of course you, you you occupy a space that few people have occupied within the American American comic book industry. In addition to create, you know, create designing logos, designing typefaces, designing typography, um, actually creating artwork, you're one of the few people. It seems to me who's ever been, who is not the artist of a comic, but has been credited on a comic as being the designer. And that's not something that's happened a great deal over the course of the, the existence of the American comic book industry. No, no, you're right. And I think that, I think credits are more forthcoming across the board. I mean, colorists get much more credit these days than they used to. And, um, uh, and, and I think the work that colorists put into modern comics is so much more complex than it used to be. Yeah. But I think there is a growing appreciation of the value of design. And certainly when I started out, um, it was very much an uphill struggle to inject any kind of um, originality into the world of comic books. They all were very much hidebound in a kind of 50s to 70s aesthetic that um, sort of played into the nostalgia of comic book fans, but didn't really move it forward. And I was always trying to, because I did a lot of work in the music industry and advertising, um, it was obvious to me that there were many, many tricks that you could um, push into comics to elevate them a bit more. And so I've always been trying to to do that, to work against what the current um, rather hidebound stylistic trends are in comics. Um, I mean, I'd, sometimes I've been successful, sometimes not so much. I think comic books for a visual medium is surprisingly hidebound in convention, with obviously some notable exceptions. But sort of mainstream comics, particularly Marvel comics, look very much like they did 20, 30 years ago. And maybe even worse, to be honest. And I think this is a, you know, it's, it's a lost opportunity to present the material in the best way it possibly can be presented. I mean, DC have always had a much better handle on design and uh, with Richard Brunning and Mark Schiavello at the helm um, had people who were very much pushing for design quality. And now Steve Cook. Yeah, you know, who, Steve the, Cook. The, our mutual friend, Steve Cook, the great yes. Steve Cook. Yeah. Yes, I mean, he is now sort of steering the boat from a design point of view there with um, the other guys who have been there um, 
so Amy Brockway and uh, Curtis King and all the other great guys there who sort of know what they're doing. So, uh, and also Image Comics, I think um, some of the more interesting uh, design is coming out of Image, which, you know, back in the day used to be the kind of mainstream superhero knockoff um, publisher. And it's sort of quite surprising to see how they've reinvented themselves in such no, a I think they've way. truly evolved. And I think uh, Eric Stevenson and the team that just do such an amazing job about, yeah. about championing creativity, which yeah. of course, it, you know, if you get it right, is what sits at the heart of the comic book medium. When comic oh, absolutely. Books, yes. books work, it's because you've got that you've got that creative alchemy going on. And I think uh, to see them doing that is great. And I think, I think those guys are a perfect fit for you, mate. I know you take your work very seriously. And, and I think what I've always loved about talking to you about these things is that you're extremely considered about what you do. And, and on that note, um, I take it that one of the great things, one of the real treats about XX is it, it existed as the great big bison killing massively page novel that it actually was but also existed in a couple of different dimensions also musically collect from a collector standpoint uh, and i i know that you're doing some of the same things with the black locomotive what can you tell me what can what can you show with me at this juncture yeah well, i mean in xx um there was there's a signal from space in xx that's central to the plot and uh, it gets leaked onto the internet at an early stage in the novel and people start manipulating it and turning it into art and music and and trying to decipher it and um one of the things i did was write a pretentious music journalist uh, review of, of this fictitious album called citizen void by um celestial mechanic and then we, well, I say we, I then asked DJ Food and uh, Sarah Hughes, my assistant, to actually create this album. So um, I'm sure we can link to that as well. It's recently, we yeah. it's recently been, originally in the book, there was a QR code. So when you got to the music review, you could point your phone at the QR code. That would take you to a Bandcamp page. And then you could listen to the album while you read the book. And then um, Phonica Records have done a beautiful vinyl pressing of this, um, which is just out, in fact, on yellow vinyl uh, in, a, in a really nice sleeve with a limited edition print in silver and fluoro and a seven inch, also on yellow vinyl, <laughs> single that you get as well. So um, I was really happy with how that came out. And again, I sort of very much took a lot of pleasure in, in sort of designing that as part of the overall um, world of, of Novel of XX. But for Black Locomotive, we've done something quite different. We have done a song and there are sort of extra, you know, there's material that extends out from the book, should you be interested in, in finding it. Um, but we have a song called the Smokebox Song, which um, you get when you join the Smokebox Club which is a very important um, uh, narrative thread. And the Smokebox Club has an anthem which you got when you joined on a seven inch single. So when you get to that part in the book where you see the reference to the single, you again point your camera at the QR code and you can listen to this um, sort of slice of cheese from the 1970s that's even got fake static crackles on to make it sound like you've just dug something out of the loft, some old single and, and put it on. Well, that is absolutely wonderful. Uh, fake um, 70s cheese is something that we are both very keen on. <laughs> uh, and and if, if it was less warm and I was wearing my jacket, which I normally would be doing for this interview, you, I would be sporting not my Liverpool Liber Bird lapel pin, which I normally sport, but in fact, my smoke box club lapel pin, which I would be wearing with pride, which but, looks like uh, this, which looks exactly like that, and uh, and I treasure it, and I indeed uh, treasure the Forbidden Planet signed edition of the Black Locomotive with its beautifully black sprayed edges, which everybody watching this conversation can pre-order from the links <laughs> attached to this conversation. Go out and buy your copy now because I'm telling you. This book is an absolute belter. You're two for two, mate, and I can't wait to see 
what you do with your next project, brother. And whatever you do, you've got to come back and speak. To, I know you'll speak to me about it in real life, but you've got to come back and speak to me about it here at Forbidden Planet TV. No, absolutely. Of course I will. Okay. You'll be first on the list. Thanks, mate. Well, I will look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks for joining me at Forbidden Planet TV to tell me and the guys watching this all about the Black Locomotive. It's another triumph, mate, and you should be justifiably proud of it. Thank you. Take care, brother. I'll see you soon. See you soon. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.